propagating plants by stem cuttings is well within the reach of the average home gardener. It's just a matter of doing a bit of research on the type of plant that you're propagating and then providing a few basic conditions and you're in business. So the first step is knowing a bit about your plant. You can research it in my book Let's Propagate or go online and have a look on the various websites about the type of plant you're wanting to do. Some plants are incredibly easy. Things like Impatient or Busy Lizzie, you can just put a stem into a glass of water and within a few days it's starting to form roots. But most plants are a little bit more difficult than that. And I've got a couple of specimens here. This is a native fan flower. And you can see it's got sappy, succulent green growth. That's what I call softwood. Then when you get to something like this bottle brush, at the top of the stems, the wood has formed, the, the new shoots have, have gone from being succulent to what I call semi-hardwood. The stems have started to change colour from green to a sort of reddish brown colour. And the really, the older stems, perhaps a year older, are what I call hardwood. Now all three types can be appropriate for cuttings. It just depends on the type of plant you're doing. So a little bit of research can go a long way to ensuring you get a good success rate. So the thing about selecting the different types of wood for your cuttings is that you can encourage better strike rates through using hormone powders. These are basically naturally occurring substances that when applied to the base of the stem will encourage new roots to form much quicker and a lot more of them. So there's three types obviously, for one for softwood, one for the semi-hardwood or sometimes called medium wood and the strongest type of uh, hormone powder or hormone treatment you can get is the one for hardwood cuttings. They just need that little bit of extra encouragement. Now you can buy them as a powder but you can also buy them as a gel which is what I prefer because it doesn't blow around and it sticks nicely onto the base of the stem. So let's prepare a few bottle brush cuttings here. It really is quite a simple process. So we just take that fairly new growth and I'm going to trim up a few at once so that we've got enough for a whole pot. We then just simply remove the bottom few leaves. So you want to leave about 50% of the leaf growth on top because again that will help the plant to form new roots for that little bit of photosynthesis the cuttings carry out while they're striking. So for something that's a bit woody like this, it's quite easy to poke the stems into the potting mix but when you're doing a soft wooded plant like this fan flower, it's a good idea to use a uh, stick or a pencil, something like that, to dibble a hole in your potting mix so that the stem goes in nice and easily. But as I say with these bottle brush, the semi hardwood will stick quite nicely into the potting mix. So to treat the bottom of the stems, we just take the whole bundle and make sure it's got a good coating of our rooting hormone gel. Really then is just as simple as sticking those cuttings into the pot so they're nice and firmly anchored. And once you've filled the pot up, don't forget to put a label on. The last thing you want is to forget what you've propagated. So with something like semi-hardwood and hardwood cuttings, generally the top leaves have all fully expanded and they're quite tough and leathery. So you can put them in a sheltered spot in the garden under a tree, something like that, and just let them sit there. Give them a good water in, of course, when you first plant them to make sure there's good contact with the potting mix and the stem. And basically it's just then a matter of time. Uh, do that at the beginning of spring and generally within a couple of months you'll have new plants ready to pot up 
you'll be able to tell that by the roots coming out the bottom of the pot. They can be put into individual tubes or even planted straight out into the garden if you're uh, really keen. Now, when you get the softwooded cuttings like our fan flower, they need a little bit of extra humidity. So I've got this uh, little beautiful uh, home propagation device. It's a tray and these are some that I've prepared earlier and basically you can see the lid goes on and that traps a whole lot of humidity inside so you really actually need to water them. Uh, you can see the water condensing inside the, uh, the tray and that keeps conditions at about 100% humidity. So just keep an eye on them again in a nice sheltered spot on a veranda or a deck and uh, you'll be able to tell when they start growing and putting on new fresh shoot growth that's a pretty good indication that you've got roots struck underneath. Now to give your cuttings a bit of an extra helping hand something like this atomizer is also a good idea. Another little tip too when you're doing your cuttings uh, if you've researched the plant you want to propagate and it says it's quite difficult to strike then it's a good idea to actually open out the potting mix and provide a bit more aeration. You can do that with things like this perlite. It's a light fluffy material but with very large particles that gets a lot more air into the potting mix. Or things like sharp what we call sharp washed river sand where you've got little particles of gravel about the size of this perlite. Uh, things like that will really help to open out the mix and create more aeration around the stem which helps the roots to form. So there's a few little tricks to it but basically it's something that any home gardener can do so get out there and propagate.